-hmm. It's not just knowing something, it's also taking the knowledge and then putting it into action and actually making it work. I can sit here and have knowledge about how to start a business and never start a business. We want to make sure that you know our listeners um, have the knowledge and are taking that knowledge and are putting it to good use and putting it to work and, and seeing what it does in their lives and that's the liberating part. Uh, did You Eat, how did it come about, the name, the history, all that? You want to tackle it? <laughs> Go ahead. All right, so um, Did You Eat came about from um, just the black community and the older women in it. My grandmother used to ask us all the time, did you eat? Right. Um, and she didn't say, did you eat? It was always a G. <laughs> and you knew exactly what that meant. Um, and when I was younger, you know, it was just my grandmother asking me, did I eat? It wasn't, you know, I'm sitting here thinking to myself, am I hungry or not? But as I got older, honestly, it became more about the love she had for me. And it was both sides. It was both grandmothers, but my maternal grandmother more so she would always say, um, you better go in there and get yourself a plate because uh, they're gonna eat it all. <laughs> and it was just making sure that everyone had their fill and everyone ate. And it was her way of showing love. And I see that a lot with um, the elders in our community, just making sure everybody gets what they need in order to survive, in order to feel loved, in order to feel nourished. The podcast is about making sure that the people in our community have what they need in order to survive, in order to flourish, in order to be nourished, in order to feel like somebody is there in their corner. You want Honestly. your like podcast to be like the black grandma you never had. The any. black grandma you never had, even though I'm not that age yet. <laughs> I, but I mean, well, eventually I will be. But you know what I'm saying? This, it really, in all honesty, though, if you think about it, my grandmother and my mother have um, since passed on. Right. And now it's almost kind of like our turn to be the people to make sure that the younger generation has what they need in order to the resources available. Mm -hmm. A lot of times people don't know what resources are out there. Like they don't know what where to go to find the information. And I hope, we hope, to be um, just that beacon of light to just let you know that you're not out here alone. You don't have to figure it out. Um, by yourself. And it's giving people access to the tools they need to be successful. Right. A yeah. lot of times people would do better if they knew better or had the tools to do that. And a lot mm -hmm. of times uh, people just don't know. You know, you can't do what you don't know. And once you get access to those tools and those skills, now you can be successful. Could you maybe be a little specific about the kind of content you would see from an episode? Sure. So, first season, um, we are looking at talking about life after high school, life after college, college resources, but we're not just that because not everyone is interested in college, right? Mm -hmm. um, black business, right? What it entails. Um, I'm looking to talk to people who are still on the side of winning. Like they haven't quite won yet, but I wanna talk to those people who are in it, who are figuring it out. So we're looking at talking about survival skills. Mm -hmm. What happens when your water is turned off? What do you do, right? Mm -hmm. um, who do you call? Another big one is self-esteem and knowing how to present yourself to the world. Um, I know a lot of young people, um, what do you call them, Gen, Gen Zers? Gen Z. <laughs> Gen Z, <laughs> who are afraid to call and make themselves a doctor's appointment. Mm -hmm. Taking the fear out of that, mm -hmm. you know, um, telling them what to expect when they go to the doctor by themselves for the first time when mom and dad aren't there, right? Huge one, because I used to work in this space, I used to work in higher ed, and it's, you know, you have young adults coming in who don't even know what questions to ask to yeah. get what they need, and uh, universities sitting on all these resources and not necessarily being utilized or shared with the people that we don't really need the most. I mean, just survival skills. So you need to know when, how to balance your checking account, how to start saving, investing, 
What does that look like? Uh, how do you start for retirement? You know, so there's budget skills. Then credit score. Okay, how do you improve your credit score? Things that young adults need to understand to be successful, and people are not giving them that information. So we're just gonna be that pool of information, that uncle and auntie that give you those nuggets I'm an that you need, you know, to be successful. <laughs> <laughs> How is it creating a business and being um, doing a podcast with like your husband and your wife? Like, how does that? How does that? Has his ups and flows. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ups and flows. It's just ups and flows. <laughs> it, it, it's not for the weak. <laughs> it, um, it, but it's fun. It is. Fun. I think we learn more about each other every single time we talk. Sure. I, like he'll say something, and I didn't know he believed that way. That kind <laughs> of thing, right? Yeah. Um, you know, one of us might be an open book, and the other not. And you start to talk. Like, I've been married for you for how long, and I did not know. Yeah. You know those kind of things. But um, I mean, it's fun. It's something that you know we've never done before. So that's the thing, right? And the other thing too is is really interesting. The, the thing about is his workflow is different than my workflow right. and how we can build something together how we can build an empire together because you know we're about empire thinking mm -hmm. um, and what that means for us but then taking everybody else along with us because everybody eats so can you talk <laughs> about black liberation mm -hmm. and what that looks like uh, for you as like a podcast and like your goal and your mission, but just like in general, just talk on it. I think it's more uh, like what we've been saying already is empowering folks. Mm -hmm. You know, when someone gets empowered, the sky's the limit. And I feel like recently we've lost a lot of great people mm -hmm. in our country, leaders, uh, activists, and those need to be replaced. But the thing is, the talent is here. Mm -hmm. They just need to be given the opportunity to be, to arise, you know, and to walk into that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like they have the skill already, but they don't even realize they have it, yeah. mm -hmm. you know. And if we can help empower those young folks to really step up to the, what um, our world needs them to do, I mean, we're going to see some amazing things. And that's true black liberation. Mm -hmm. so. When I think of black liberation, I think of knowledge is liberating. Mm -hmm. And so the whole point of our podcast is to provide knowledge, which in turn becomes liberating because now you know it, right? Yes. And then and then it's not just knowing something. We had this discussion. Yeah. It's not just knowing something. It's also taking the knowledge and then putting it into action and actually yeah. making it work. Because you can sit on knowledge. I can sit here and have knowledge about how to start a business and never start a business. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So um, we want to make sure that you know our listeners um, have the knowledge and are taking that knowledge and are putting it to good use and putting it to work and, and seeing what it does in their lives and that's the liberating part. Do you think you're gonna have like any type of agricultural education on the podcast or something? Why not? Vegan. Okay, so first of all, I'm vegan. Okay, elaborate. Let's talk about that. Let's we, we both are, right? I'm a vegetarian, but she's vegan. Okay, I mean, for the most part, like, because yeah. I cook. I think it's important that, you know, our community has knowledge about what it means to actually nourish your body. I feel it's important that you have um, available to you what you need in order to actually feel good in your body because when you feel good in your body, you can do those things that we talked about, mm -hmm. which is win, right? Uh, which is take action on the knowledge that you you required. Uh, if you're not feeding your body good things, <laughs> it's going to be hard to have yeah. good things come out of it. I'm not sitting here telling everyone that they have to be vegan, but definitely telling people that, or you know, sharing with people that what you put in your body is important. Our community is running rampant with diabetes. And obesity and other ailments caused by food it, it, it's killing our community mm -hmm. and I mean this is gonna be maybe far-fetched and maybe not but Afro futurism we're in the future yeah. so in order to be in the future in order to have a part in it we have to be here and we have to stop those things you know so many horrible foods for you that causes cancer and, and those things and I want 
our community to have long, prosperous lives. The communities that are starting gardens, love to you see know it. what I mean? That's what I love to see it. Mm -hmm. Those are important. You know, I, I know so many mothers, so many families who would feed fathers, mothers, parents, who would feed their kids good things if they were available. Yeah. They're not just trying to feed their kid a hot dog, but sometimes that's all that's available. In all honesty, my veganism came from the fact that my mother passed away from colon cancer. Whether or not it was the food that she ate that did it, or if it was something else that was environmental, my brain went totally to, you know what? <laughs> you need to do something, change something um, about you know the way that you, you eat. And so, I decided to do this about five years ago. But yeah, to get to your question, yes. We're going to talk about that. I think it's very important, extremely important. Mm -hmm. Are you artistically fulfilled? We're going to ask both of you, but whoever mm -hmm. wants to start. So I would say, you know, at first I never really thought of myself as an artist. Um, I love music. I play music. I love to sing. Um, but I never really considered myself an artist. But then me and Nicole kind of thought about it. If you think about making a podcast, you're creating, using MIDI, Medium, which is the, you know, the podcast, the platform, and preventing a product to your listeners, so you are an artist. Um, and so I think it's, it's been very fulfilling for me because I've never really walked in that space. So it's new for me. Am I fulfilled as an artist? I don't think I'll ever be, <laughs> in all honesty. I, I think, first of all, do I even consider myself an artist? I've been told I've been one. I've been told that I am one. I am starting to walk in it more, um, which is new and exciting. And so I'd love to see where that leads. I do more than just podcasting, right? So podcasting, like he said, is a medium that we use to present um, a product to the world to share for them to take and peruse and look at. And, and critique as you do in art, right? So yes, I think podcasting is an art. So in that space, yes, I'm an artist. I feel that an artist will always art. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's perpetual. Mm -hmm. um, I really don't feel like there's any one fulfillment. Um, like I don't really feel like you can fulfill it in a way where you feel like I did this and I'm done, right? I mean, maybe with one piece of music, maybe with one piece of artwork. But I think you're always striving for more. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah, no, I'm not fulfilled. <laughs> I'm going to keep doing this, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. whatever the art is, I'm going to keep arting. So let me ask you this, yes. um, both of you. If it isn't necessarily artistic fulfillment, what would you say you get out of doing um, Did You Eat? What do I get out of? Mm -hmm. Personally, specifically. I love helping people. So if this form of art can actually take one person and help them become fulfilled, <laughs> that's fulfilling to me but then like i said i'm not really truly fulfilled because i want to see everybody win so if i want to see everybody win then i'm gonna go to the next person and then i'm gonna see make sure they get what they need so that they can end up like okay i'm fulfilled a little bit now okay i'm gonna go to the next person um so yes that that's that's the fulfillment for me is to see everybody succeed i just i i love the next generation i see the fire in them mm -hmm. i see mm -hmm. i see the energy Potential. i see the I see it all and I just I just want to sit there and then when I'm older and I'm in my little rocking chair I'm just going to be sitting there like I did some of that. I have one more question. Uh, advice for people who are interested in completely starting over their career mm -hmm. and um, venturing out into something a little bit more fulfilling. Um, my thing would be to embrace the change. A lot of times people are hesitant to change. And, and I was just talking to a group on, um, online about an event where people don't like change because in their past, every time they had change, it was bad change. You know, people was in one house, then they got kicked out that house, got another house. Every time they changed, it seemed like it got worse. And so people almost are afraid of change in that regard. They say, hey, if it's not broke, let's just stay right here. Let's stay in this little block. But you got to realize you're not going to get any better unless you're willing to challenge and change. You know, and embrace change because change constantly is constantly going to happen. You know, it's constantly going on. Uh, my advice 
for those who are looking to change the direction that they're going in, right, um, is fairly concrete. Find somebody <laughs> that is doing the thing that you want to do, right? Um, and sit down with them, maybe take them out for a coffee, and I hate saying pick your brain, but pick the brain. I mean, and, and, and in that, ask questions and be sincere. I feel like change is constant. Change is a thing that humans do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, you are multifaceted, meaning that you have more than one interest and I believe that everybody needs to explore that interest. I feel like if you are really, really interested in change, you would do it fervently. You will go after it like your life depended on it. And you would pivot where you need to pivot. Mm -hmm. And you would seek advice where you need to seek advice. And you live, breathe, and eat that thing. Eat that thing. Did you eat? Did you eat? <laughs> you will definitely get there. Yeah. Thank you so much, guys. You're welcome. Did you eat? Give him a hand. Give him a hand.